It's time for our responsive reading. This is a weekly practice that we do together here at Beacon Church to consider and uh, confess the scriptural truths that unite us as believers in Jesus Christ and followers of Jesus Christ. We use uh, material from the New City Catechism, which is that question and answer that you see on the board. We don't hold that uh, these, these confessions written by men in and of themselves are authoritative, but rather we believe that these accurately represent the authoritative truths that we find in God's Word. This week, our responsive reading question is, how can we glorify God? As created beings made in God's own image, we have been created to bear God's image and make Him known, to bear forth His His goodness and righteousness in in the universe that God created. In Isaiah 43, 6-7, God says, Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the end of the earth, everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This verse makes it explicit that God created us for his own glory. For those of us who believe in God, know him, and love him, wanting to know how to glorify him is an important question, an important consideration. How do we make the most of the God who can never be made too much of? We know that God is perfect in his beauty, goodness, righteousness, and holiness, and he deserves to be known as he is. He deserves to be shown to the world around us. If you think that sounds weird, uh, that that we would try to glorify something, uh, just think about how people talk about their sports teams. It's actually pretty normal to share the things that we love with those around us. Sorry, I've lost my place here. And uh, when we love those things more than the people around us, it can be a little bit annoying for them, can't it? Um, So if you love God, it's important to consider how can we reveal God's nature and character to the world around us in the proper way? Well, let's consider several passages which actually tell us things that bring God glory. I'm going to borrow some of these passages from Adam Verrigan, who has taught on this faithfully in the past. And uh, so let's take a look at those passages. Psalm 19 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. So if God created everything, honoring him and recognizing him as the creator brings him glory. Because the beauty, vastness of his creation speaks to his power and beauty. That may seem obvious, but think of things like like atheism and, and Darwinianism that tries to rob God of that glory by saying that God did not create the glorious world around us. Psalm 19 also says that the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. So because God is perfect, his word is perfect. In Acts 2, the early Christians devoted themselves to the teaching of God's word. God's word is the way that he's chosen to reveal himself to us. So learning and teaching God's word brings him glory. Third, 2 Corinthians 4.15 tells us that being thankful glorifies God. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. And fourth, Deuteronomy 6 warns the Israelites not to worship other gods, because worship gives glory to the object of that worship. Revelation 4.11 says, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. So worshiping God brings him glory. If we were to worship other things, that would be taking that glory from God. Not not actually taking the, the real glory, but we would be trying to give glory to something else which is not worthy. And fifth, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20, tells us that what we do with our bodies can glorify God. 
Let's take a look. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. That verse is clear that the things that we do with our body can glorify God when we obey his commandments, do what he's instructed us to do, use our bodies in the way that he is intended. That brings God glory. So I invite you to join me in responding after I read the question. Please stand. How can we glorify God? We glorify God by enjoying him, loving him, trusting him, and by obeying his will, commands, and law. Let's pray. Lord, only you are worthy to receive glory from us. Lord, truly, your, your glory is infinite and can never be made too much of. Lord, I pray that we would be faithful to your commands, Lord, that we would see in your word what brings you glory and what does not. Lord, I pray that we would be not only hearers of the word, but doers of the word. And Lord, I pray that we would, we would enjoy and we would find satisfaction in glorifying you. Lord, other things are not worthy of giving our glory to. No, no sports team or no, no activity, Lord. We, we can talk about some of these things for, for far too long and give them too much attention. We can really talk them up to those around us. But Lord, I pray that um, you would forgive us where we make too much of created things and do not, make do not make enough of the one who created all things. Lord, I pray that you would humble our hearts this morning as, uh, as we receive your teaching. Uh, I pray a blessing on, on Joe, uh, that your spirit would be with him. Give him uh, words to speak, clarity to teach us your word rightly. And Lord, may our hearts and minds be changed by the preaching of your word. Amen. It's time for a five-minute break, so this is a chance.